Hey everyone, welcome to vlog 52. My name is Linda, I'm also known as Wall Hobby, and this is my little corner of YouTube where I share all about my knitting adventures, my designing adventures and my indie dye adventures. If you are new here, welcome. I hope you like what you see. Please like and subscribe. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I have had some very busy days because I have been to a yarn show in Tilburg that's uh, a little more uh, in the southern part of the country and we had a yarn show for three days and um, it was a, a joy to be there and to vent there. We got many presents. I did uh, make a few acquisitions and um, I also got some knitting in during my time uh, since the last vlog. So we are going to start right away. Um, the last vlog I um, forgot to show you these two cuties. These felted mice are made for me by my swap partner Marianne. And uh, as you can see, Mr. Mouse holds a little cake and Miss Mouse holds a little baby. And I think they are so cute. Uh, I named them uh, Knoop, Azure and Truitje, which are the Dutch words for button, well, Azure, you know, and a little sweater. So, um, but I forgot to show them the last time and um, so I made sure they were on the top of my list today. Uh, then I had a knitter, Ilse, who finished the mystery knit along, the Muppets Shawl for me by Mary Anarella, also known as Lyrical Knits. And this is the design. And Ilse made this for me to showcase at my uh, booth uh, at the fairs. But it is an awesome design with all these different stitches and all these fun lines and panels. And um, she used a Grusmi as the main color. And there's um, Ultraviolet, Dioptas, Olivander, chocolate cake, matte appeltjes and warm sunset in here. And it was a real eye catcher during the fair. Uh, so I already thanked Ilse in the Dutch vlog for uh, gifting me her knitting time. Uh, and I'm very happy that we could show this one. In the Dutch vlog, I also showed the line dance mystery knit along. This was my line dance, but my sister also made one and she omitted the fringes. So this is how it looks without the fringes. And uh, they were also on, on show um, at the fair and uh, well, several people we're definitely um, tickled to knit this design as well. So uh, we sold several uh, kits for that. Let's see, I made a list because I have so much to show you. A Dutch knitter who uses uh, my yarn really very often decided to make me a mini sock guirland. to show my yarns at the fair just for fun. There were so many people asking 
which color is this and do you have a pattern well i didn't have a pattern of course but i told everyone just google uh, mini sock knitting uh, pattern and you will definitely find something to make your own mini sock let's see uh, we did bring three emotional support chickens but my sister took them home with her again I will um, add in a picture here somewhere uh, to show our chickens and if people made a selfie with the chickens uh, they were eligible for winning a DK weight skein um, that is my new yarn base which I, la which I launched uh, during the Knit and Not Fair and um, we already um, did that giveaway in the Dutch vlog, which I did together with my sister. And then we put half of it on my channel and half of it on her channel. Um, my sister went shopping for needle stoppers and I got to pick one set and I picked these nice round ones with hearts uh, they are a bit weird on my needles because these uh, these needles are 2.25 millimeters and as you can see this just won't work so um, i put one on there because i don't want to lose it and then i put both needle tips in the needle stopper so that it's safe and secure I also bought needle stoppers and I bought these cuties look at this this might just be my new addiction needle stoppers and knitting books uh, I also like stitch markers a lot uh, progress keepers for those of you who are not new here but I just couldn't resist these ones. Don't you love them? They're so cute. And well, while I have this in my hands, oh, I can show you Stitch Market 2 that I bought. I bought a set of five, these acrylic uh, alpacas or llamas. Um, I bought them at the Wee Yarn Company and these are by Twin Mountain Handicraft and there were five there but I started using them right away so they are all over the place in my knitwear but this is my excavation blanket my scrappy blanket I started a while ago and as you can see where the knit marker is I did manage to get some rows in and that is mostly because yesterday i did knit on this uh, i had the three day fair uh, we had to um, build our booth on wednesday and then thursday friday saturday we were at the fair we were staying at a hotel rob picked me up uh, at the end of the saturday and it was about 8.30 in the evening when we got home then we had to unpack everything and um, well before we sat down to have a drink it was probably around 10 or something and I was very tired from the fair and uh, but Sunday morning yesterday morning we had to be up really early because Kiersey our youngest daughter um, was flying to Peru for an internship so we had to drop her off at Schiphol Airport at 7 in the morning and so we had to leave the house at 6 so I just had a short night and when I came home I still was so tired so I did try to sleep some more but that didn't work so the rest of the day I just have been in my corner on the couch um, knitting a little on this one 
This excavation blanket, you um, start at this side of the needle and you leave a tail that is about uh, five to six inches long. Then you knit across and back and you cut the yarn leaving a tail again. And these yarns you will eventually um, cut uh, to the size that you want to be that you want to have them as fringes. So you tie a knot here when you finish the row, a row. So you don't have to weave in any ends. And, uh, but the second half of the blanket, I'm going to do differently because then you have to start here, but then your knitting will look like this instead of this. And I want it to look like this all the way across. So Amy of Noble Character Crafts, where I saw this excavation blanket, she is purling the second half of her blanket. And I don't think, I, I don't want uh, the second half to be like this, but I don't know if I'm going to solve it by purling the second half or if I'm going to solve it by knitting a second half and graft it to this one. So, but I still have so much more to go. So I don't have to think about it right now. I have my little bucket of leftover yarn here. So I am using that uh, all the time. And um, I think it will be really pretty. I really like how it looks. Let me open my list again. Okay, so I showed you the stitch markers and I showed you the needle stoppers. Then we got a pin from one of the other uh, vendors. And that is this one. Don't you love it? This is Dolly. They have a big Dolly on their booth, which is uh, crocheted all around and uh, she's gorgeous and they decided to make a pin for Dolly and we got we got that as a gift uh, I'm going to show you this bag this bag right away as well and I am missing something oh that's in here because this is the larger back and you can um, even make this one longer so that you can uh, carry it across your body, but you can also carry it like this. And these two um, buttons are for this little notions pouch, which you can put in here and then you can Press it to close again. So it is a removable notions pouch. How cool is that? It has big um, pockets on the inside, three of them, and another removable notions pouch that is inside the bag. This is just one big pouch. And you can press it in here. So that it is in the back and secured. There is a, a key cord here with this little hook that you can use. And it has a zipper. So this is, it is my favorite bag. That's what the label says. And she always has this cute detail where she puts a few stitch markers matching the colors of your bag. And um, I love it. 
This is the last one of this, this bag that she has because the amount of time it takes her to make this one just was not, um, it was too long to get a good price for this bag. So she decided to stop uh, stocking them, but she will make one if someone asks for it. So, and this is a bag by Hobby Bags. A Dutch um, bag maker. I'm going to um, put my Groningen Provinciaal project in that bag because that's a bigger project so I do need to have a bigger bag for that. I got another bag made by my friend Esther and that's this one. And it's a drawstring bag. And when you pull the strings, it just flattens down like this. You have pockets here all around. And there are also pockets inside the bag. Two, three pockets. And it has the same fabric as on the outside. And I got to pick my own fabric. And in here is my hexapeel pattern. This is my new sock pattern that I launched at the Knit and Not Fair. My hexapeel pattern. And it has all these hexagons with little details of traveling stitches in between. And this is such a nice and easy knit. Uh, once you have started the pattern, it is pretty clear um, what you have to do. So um, you don't need to look at the pattern all the time. If you can read your knitting a little bit, you, you can see what is happening and what the next step will be. So um, for this um, hex appeal pattern, I uh, put together kits with 80 grams of the main color and 20 grams of the contrast color for heels, toes and cuffs. And this heel will be in there with the pearl uh, ridge here. And um, I knitted this sock up to the point where I need to put in the heel because um, my YouTube video in which I explain how to knit this one uh, just it did not work out. I probably made a mistake somewhere so it wasn't saved properly so I have to um, re-record this one uh, but I can do that tomorrow. And then we have, let's see, let me look at my list for a minute. We got many things to eat, many things for sweet cravings, um, but I already uh, gave half of it to my sister and, well, since you don't know which knitter it's from, it's probably not that interesting to show it to you, so I won't do that. Um, what we did buy on the fair, well, I bought it, one for me and one for my sister, is this oyster shell. But look how cute this is. I think that this makes a lovely, lovely um, place to put some stitch markers, uh, to put some T-pins or anything. So I really like this. Uh, my sister has one with a delft blue hmm well a very famous this is a red robin i think you call it uh the one that my sister has is all also a bird about the same size but with blue and yellow i should know the name but 
it is escaping me at the moment. Anyway, she has one bigger bird in her shell and I have the smaller ones. We also got a book. From a knitter. I got this one. My sister got a book from December for December makings. This is a really old book but it was very cute of her to bring it for us and um, I bought two knitting books as well. I bought this one only yoking this has 12 yoke patterns in it, but it's only about the yokes. So you need to uh, use another pattern for uh, the rest of the sweater. But it is a really nice book about yokes and it has 12 designs in four, no, in three yarn weights. So, um, there, I think there's decay and fingering and lace. This book consists, consists of 12 yoke sweaters in three different yarn weight sections. Four sweaters in each section, from warmest to lightest fabrics. Once you spot the sweater you'd like to make, follow the pattern for the yarn weight which we will find at the end of the section, checking the size you should be working by consulting the overview at the beginning of the section and referring to the charts for knitting the yoke of the specific sweater you have chosen when directed. But look how pretty this book is. I love it. So I bought this one and I bought the Japanese Stitching Bible with 260 stitches. And this is also such a pretty book. Very beautiful. So that will definitely help me in my designer's journey. I bought this mug. What do you think? Don't you love it? Um, I, I was planning on using this as my vlog mug, but this part of the mug is not, um, how do you call it, glazed? I'm not sure. Well, this is just uh, once you um, once this get, gets wet, it will just, well, it, it just won't work. And there's a tiny little hole here in the, in the handle that is probably, there's probably a very good reason that it's there. But anyways, I was planning to use this as a mug to drink tea from, but that's not going to happen. Um, as soon as we saw that this wasn't working, um, we emptied them and this will be my knitting notions mug or just for fun. But well, we, bought, we both bought one of this as well, uh, but we won't use it um, for drinking. One of the wall hobby knitters came to our booth and we got the sweetest earrings. Look at this. A tiny, tiny yarn ball with knitting needles in them. They are uh, earrings and we uh, wore them at the fair and I was wearing them when I recorded the Dutch vlog, but then I thought, oh, I need to take them off and uh, put, that, put them somewhere safe. So they are already back in their tin, but really lovely. And well, 
completely unnecessary, but so much fun. <laughs> I bought a pattern to make this crochet a cover for, uh, for this tape measure. Um, I can just use some scrap yarn and crochet around it. And we also got some stitch markers by uh, one of the wool hobby knitters. Let's see, I'm going to take these off. A little cat. This is Apollo, it says on the note. A ruby. A four leaf clover. And a crown. I hope you can see that. I think you can. And there were also three cedar um, balls in there. So I put them in all my project bags. And this was a gift from Floor from Atelier Bont & Blau. She has a yarn shop in the middle of the Netherlands. I am going to show you we had some other things um, as gifts, but like I said, it's all from knitters that you don't know. So that will be less interesting, I think. But I'm going to show you my filigree tea. I am knitting away on this one. This is the raglan, as you can see. And this is the back, and then we have another raglan on this side, of course. I need to do um, seven more repeats of the four needles that are, well, very easy. Knit on the right side, uh, purl on the wrong side, but on the first row you add 10 stitches and on the second row you add 8 stitches. So I need to do um, 7 more repeats and then my stitch count will be around 400 whatever and then I can close it for the v-neck and start knitting in the round. Hi. This is the Julie Knits in Paris and the yarn is uh, Wools of Holland yarn. I already told this about this in my uh, previous vlog. But here you can see the stitch marker. I replaced it. There was a very boring stitch marker in here. So I replaced it with one of my new ones. And you can see that I did about, what is it? Two inches, I think. So um, I will move the stitch marker up. Let me do that right away. And then I hope that I can show it again next time. So I need to move the stitch marker up in my excavation blanket. There wasn't a stitch marker in my hex appeal yet, but I will put one in there as well. Let's go for another alpaca. So there it is. And let's see, I think that's all for now. Yes, I think so. We had a great time at the fair and um, our next yarn show will be a one day show uh, outside uh, in Jaure, which is up north and it will be a very nice fair. Uh, I was there last year and I was I was vending there last year as well, but I went there many times as a visitor. So um, 
I'm looking forward to that as well. But until that time, I need to um, die up uh, to um, replenish the stock because we sold a lot. And I need to start dyeing up Advent yarn because we are again doing the custom dye uh, thingy. So um, the Advent calendar is a lot of work. But I will have plenty of time to do that in the upcoming months. And I really enjoyed that as well. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment. I love to read your comments and I will see you next time. Happy making. Bye bye.